Hello everyone, welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff and in today's video we are going to continue our discussion over the topic type of distress in the flexible payments. This is a part 2 of this topic and in this video we will be discussing about the cracks that happens in the flexible payment. So in the part 1 we have discussed uh, the surface defect of the flexible payment and there we have discussed in detail about the fatty surface, smooth surface defect, sticking defect and hungry surface defect. Now, if you haven't watched that video, uh, you can watch it after watching this video. The uh, both videos are independent, and, but covers the overall topic of the different distress that can happen in the flexible payments. In this video, we will be focusing our discussion over the crack defect that can happen in the flexible payment, and the cracks that we are going to discuss, or the type of cracks that happens in the flexible payment, are of the hairline cracks, alligator cracking, longitudinal cracking, edge cracking, transverse cracking and reflection cracking. Okay, so this is what we are going to discuss in today's video. All right, so let's move on to the topic cracks in the flexible element. All right, so uh, cracks are when uh, there is like in a simplest term, the cracking over the surface of the flexible element. Surface means the surface that is exposed to prevailing traffic condition okay so these this is what the crackings are now crackings depending upon the intensity of the cracking and the pattern of crackings we have the uh, hairline cracking alligator cracking longitudinal cracking edge cracking shrinkage cracking which is uh, we are going to cover as a transverse cracking transverse cracking and reflection cracking okay so uh, First of all, talk, talking about your the hairline cracks. Okay, so I have missed the main heading that is this is the hairline cracking. Hairline cracks that appears on the on the surface of the flexible payments. Now, uh, hairline cracks are very very small amount of cracks that appears over the surface. Okay, these are present in the narrow areas and width is less than one mm. Very small amount of cracks very small uh, of uh, width 1 mm uh, crack that appears over the surface it is what we call as the hairline cracks and these are located at isolated carriageway or in the lane carriageway that is this means that throughout the carriageway they can occur or have, can be seen anywhere okay very small amount small width cracks are what we call as the hairline cracks what is the cause of these cracks the these cracks are developed they're either because of insufficient uh, binder content use, if you are using excessive filler, if they, if uh, during the laying of the surface cores the compaction has not been adequate, there is excessive uh, or the intensity of oxidation of the bitumen is very high, or there is an ingression in the moisture in the granular layer. Okay, and we know that flexible pavement is a multi-layered payment system where the uh, base cores can be uh, can be of granular nature or unbound nature now the if because of improper drainage condition if this layer is being affected by moisture and this propagation of moisture is in upper direction or the moisture right from the ground level is uh, down the line it uh, with passage of time it percolates to the top surface that is the surface cores that is the surface course of the flexible payment then these kind of cracks may appear okay um, so these are not uh, what we call of uh, very great concern uh, these happens because of n number of reasons and they can be treated very easily right the treatment like uh, use of fog seals application of liquid rejuvenating agents uh, by using slurry seal and micro servicing these kind of Treat, uh, hairline cracks can be treated. The image here shows some hairline cracks. You can see, like you can see, the width is very very small, right? And they appear throughout the carriageway. And uh, like there is no specific location of uh, uh, these hairline cracks. They can ha uh, either can cover full carriageway or can be a, a concentrated at specific lane or at a specific section reason we have discussed uh, suppose there is an improper laying uh, right at the edges so this uh, uh, these hairline cracks can occur likewise improper drainage right at the uh, uh, 
uh, along the edges are there then again the uh, because of this uh, the oxidation of bituminous will take place in a very faster pace and because of which the uh, helene cracks can appear but the treatment uh, is required because if not checked then intensity or the concentration of these crack will down the line will increase the next kind of cracks that we are going to discuss are what we call as the alligator cracks also called as, as the map cracking now uh, the main characteristic of the crack the alligator crack the main characteristics is that these cracks are interconnected in nature okay these are interconnected in nature and forms a small irregular blo blocks in the pavement right as we can see here you can see here like these are interconnected cracks you can see these are interconnected cracks or down the carriageway right throughout the road now again they can be considered as a specific section of the road or can uh, progress throughout the carriageway you can see these are interconnected cracks forming small blocks you can see like this is one block this is two like that small blocks are uh, formed here is again an example of these hail and cracks now what happens with these uh, alligator cracks is that uh, you can see that it provides the opportunity to the moisture to seep in, into the into the surface cores and this moisture that is now uh, seeping into the uh, through this surface cores now goes to the, the bottom layer and which further destroys the overall structural durability of the flexible pavement why they are called as alligator cracks because their pattern their interconnected pattern represents or resembles the skin of the alligator that's why they are called as uh, alligator cracks now these cracks may be of different type depending upon the extent and severity the size of irregular shaped blocks of the crack varies from less than uh, 30 cm to more and these kind of cracks appears along the wheel path that is uh, along the carriageway as in when where the traffic is moving these cracks starts to develop and with the passage of time uh, see as the traffic moves the moving traffic applies some road and load and the cracking propagates throughout the carriageway what are the causes of uh, alligator cracks uh, the first and the major cause of alligator crack is excessive deflection of pavement surface normally in the wheel path so basically what we what happens is that uh, we definitely know that uh, this flexible pavement is a multi-layered structure now what happens is that uh, the load that has been taken into consideration for design designing of the uh, flexible pavement the actual traffic the actual traffic is much higher now this uh, uh, high uh, rate of uh, increase in, in the traffic they can again be the uh, there are, uh, like the reasons are many uh, one of the prominent uh, reason can be uh, the overloading of the commercial vehicle okay the overloading of the commercial vehicle can be one of the major cause the uh, error while uh, noting down or estimating the amount of traffic that will be diverted to the if it is a new route uh, the traffic that will be diverted uh, to this route again a uh, miscalculation is, is there so one uh, so because of this excessive increase in the traffic the load that is being now taken by the surface course by the uh, by the flexible surface course of the flexible payment is more than what was initially planned and because of that more stress is being acted at the surface course and because of which the cracking starts to propagate and as, uh, as and when uh, the vehicle moves so uh, so the crack starts to develop along the wheel path and soon they interconnect with each other then the second point is inadequate pavement thickness which is correlated with the first point first point uh, that is we have done certain mistake in the uh, estimation of the amount of load the uh, payment is going to um, uh, going to take up and because of that what has happened is the the thickness there is an error in the deciding the thickness of the uh, each layer of the flexible payment so of course uh, the crack will uh, will definitely be developed and then weakness of the soil subgrade or lower layers of the pavement due to ingress of excessive moisture in the pavement and saturation so like we have discussed uh, and can be seen in the image here you can see that the moisture seeps through these cracks right suppose the 
flexible pavement is being constructed in a area with, that is prone to uh, very heavy rainfalls and uh, if and when there is some cracks that are uh, developed so that moisture will be will be stored or that portion will be introduced to that uh, that moisture this moisture from the surface will seep into the layer below and which will eventually weaken the layers and down the line if not uh, the treatment is not done in a adequate uh, in a uh, adequate time period then this will this process will keep on happening at a very accelerated pace which will so as and when the moisture the moisture will move down it will keep on destroying the uh, structural integrity of the way of the flexible pavement and then pay, these uh, cracks at the surface will further increase second thing is that the soil subgrade that we have uh, uh, during the start of the project the soil the proper compaction of the subgrade has not been done and then the next point is the overloading of the heavy commercial vehicle that we have discussed in the uh, in the first um, point then brittleness of binder due to aging of the binder and lowering of surface temperature due to weather condition so uh, we, uh, the oxidation of the uh, binder takes place at a much uh, faster rate than, than anticipated because of which the uh, the elasticity of the uh, bituminous mix will reduce which will eventually lead to generation of certain uh, alligator cracks and due to excessive introduction of the moisture in the region uh, the stripping of the uh, underlying base course may take place and because of which the alligator crack cracks may arise and the intensity may increase with the due course of time um, now talking about the serviceability of the alligator cracks serviceability means the intensity of these uh, alligator cracks they can be categorized as a low severity if we see very narrow cracks narrow cracks means hairline cracks okay like interconnected hairline cracks hairline cracks are just independent cracks that can happen across the width of the pavement but if we see interconnected hairline cracks then these may be uh, considered considered as a low severity right the reason again we have discussed the cause any any of the cause that we have discussed can be the reason these since these are hairline cracks there will not be much depth and width to these cracks and the range may vary from 1 to 3 mm okay so not much cvt we will uh, take it as a low severity when we talk about uh, medium severity medium severity basically interconnected uh, cracks will be there uh, and small areas will be found but the width of the crack will increase from 1 mm 3 mm to 3 to 6 mm right uh, in medium severity we uh, may see the sign of uh, slight spelling uh, sli slipping this this slide slipping along with no pumping visible this means that some binder uh, the aggregates may also start to come out small amount of aggregate may also start to come come out but no pumping is visible. pumping means the uh, the water that Percolates from the bottom of the, of the flexible pavement. Uh, as and when the pressure, the moving vehicle will apply pressure from here, the water will is, uh, will be percolating from the bottom of the pavement. And as the water moves upward, it will take with it certain uh, particles, uh, both soil as well as the binder part, binder aggregate particles with it. So this is not visible. Okay, this uh, pumping phenomena is not visible. However, certain aggregates. Uh, may be seen coming out from these crack then comes the high severity level and basically um, we can very well uh, visualize what high severity level will be so the uh, width of the crack will increase uh, to 6 mm or more more loose particles we will see pumping of water and fine materials that phenomena we will see concentration of fines right at the surface and uh, the interconnection of the cracks will be much larger right so this means more wide uh, wide cracking in more the width of interconnected cracks will be much larger okay now um, what could be the treatment so the main cause of the cracking first of all the main cause of cracking should be determined like we have discussed the, the reason can be many right uh, the reason that we had discussed the first reason region is excessive increase in the in the load 
that may be due to increase in the, in the traffic or increase in the overloading phenomena whatever the cause may be then uh, maybe if we have done proper uh, traffic survey but the due to some error the thickness of the payment that we have uh, 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 designed or taken uh, is the is very less than it should be uh, then improper uh, laying of each of the, the uh, each of the layer the compaction has not been done properly either at subgrade level uh, we have not used a proper uh, uh, mix uh, design a uh, binder we have used is fairly less or because of the temperature uh, conditions the oxidation uh, of the bituminous uh, is taking place at a much faster rate so the reasons are many right so first of all the first thing is to assess what type of treatment need to be done we need to identify what should be the main cause of these cracking then once we identify the uh, the main cause then the treatment can be done but how treatment can be done crack sealing uh, by bitumen immersion so in case of uh, a low severity these uh, sealing of the crack uh, can be done either through bitumen immersion or through rubberized and modified uh, bitumen. Uh, if the the uh, the severity level is uh, in the medium range, then again, uh, depending upon the up, upon the uh, upon the severity, if medium, uh, then again, use a rubberized modified bitumen may be used to seal out those crack. Right. Then, under high severity, what we have to do is first of all, we have to we have no other option but to remove that surface. Okay, we have to remove that. Uh, surface and if the core reason of this uh, generation of alligator cracks is the uh, structural uh, inadequacy that is the if the thickness is less or their loading has been increased abruptly or we find out that there's too much uh, the load that the payment is taking is way more than what we had anticipated then basically what we have to do is we have to design an overlay we have no other option we have to design an overlay right and uh, if required uh, redesign of the uh, full payment uh, surface uh, may be required suppose subgrade is weak uh, so no matter how much uh, you do treatment right at the surface level if the soil subgrade is weak then ultimately you have to remove whole of the layer okay so proper care has to be taken while doing all this survey and uh, we have to maintain that's why uh, like we have to maintain a proper quality control while uh, constructing any road all right then the next type of cracking is your longitudinal cracking and the cr like the names itself explain what kind of cracking it will be these are the cracks that run along the length okay the cracks that appears parallel to the center line or along the road length is what we call as the longitudinal cracking and these cracks are sometimes the source of onset of alligator cracking okay very important point uh, why because see uh, if if uh, let's say this is your width of the carriageway and uh, if one longitudinal crack has occurred one longitudinal cracking has occurred right at the center of the uh, of your uh, surface course of the flexible pavement so so you can very well um, imagine you can very well visualize as and when the traffic or any vehicle will move over this crack uh, the so this crack will further widen and will eventually lead to propagation of more cracks at the both side of the of the payment okay so this down the line will lead to the formation of interconnected cracks that we can call as the alligator cracks talking about the location these cracks may be may appear at joints between two paving lane or between pavements and paved shoulder right this means right at the joint the uh, the probability of longitudinal crack is at the joints uh, reason being the joint being the most weakest weakest section of the payment at that point of time so definitely the, this uh, joint can uh, can be the starting point of the generation of the longitudinal cracks and uh, the reason is uh, reason of generation of longitudinal crack is like too much variability in the temperature condition right the morning it's uh, very hot and then it rains and then it becomes uh, cold 
uh, right so in hilly areas these kind of cracks uh, can be uh, very well seen because of first of all main reason is the irregular topography and top of that the variable temperature conditions uh, in the morning it uh, it is sunny then uh, it rains and then uh, it becomes cooled so this irregular top topography and you know, on top of that this change in temperature condition uh, can be the one of the major cause of the of these longitudinal cracking. So wetting and drying um, is the one of the main cause of the longitudinal cracking because because of this the joints basically become weak and pose a threat of generation of longitudinal cracks. Talking about their severity, we have the low that is the the thickness of the crack or the width of the crack is one to three mm, and uh, uh, medium is three to six, and severity is if you have more than six, just like the alligator cracking. Here are the examples for the longitudinal crack. You can see this is the crack that is being propagating right at the center line. This you and we can see very well right uh, like the width of these uh, cracks can vary right this is again example of longitudinal crack both are at the severity, high severity level again example of the longitudinal cracking you can see this is a very that's what what we were discussing hilly terrain and you can see this longitudinal cracking um so what could be a treatment for the longitudinal cracking. Uh, if the intensity, if the crack severity is from low to medium, then we'll what we'll do is we'll try to seal this crack. Okay, if the crack is simply the hairline or uh, uh, till 3 mm, then what we'll do is we will seal this crack using some uh, rubberized bitumen. In case of high severity, this this means these uh, these are high severity cases. So you can see no matter how much uh, we put uh, the we seal this crack it won't last long and uh, the one of the main thing is that uh, the if suppose there is a rainfall then water will easily seep through this crack and go to the lower surface okay so in case in case uh, there is high uh, uh, severity we have to basically remove this layer and uh, we have to do a fresh overlay then we have what we call as the transverse cracking and in longitudinal cracking, the crack was along the length. In transverse cracking, the crack propagation will be majorly along the width. The cracking will be majorly along the width of the carriageway. Okay. So first of all, discussing about uh, discussing the image here. What we can see here is that you can see uh, like the cracks are generated generated along the length. This is like say the the generation of a longitudinal crack. Then what the designer or the what in the what engineer did was they tried to do, uh, mitigate this crack by using some sealant you can see there are sealant that has been provided if using be rubberized bitumen or bitumen emulsion whatever the case may be they have tried to seal that crack but since the intensity of the crack was very high you can see the sealing didn't provide much of the benefit basically the crack generation of cracks start uh, propagation the crack kept on propagating and uh, uh, further covered whole, whole of the carriageway okay so basically these cracks uh, um, uh, like here in this image you can see longitudinal as well as the transverse crack also okay and these are interconnected in the transverse direction and large bo block perpendicular to the direction of the road uh, basically these are what we call as the transverse crack talking about the local location uh, may occur at the isolated location or uh, along the uh, carriageway what could be the cause this may occur due to reflection of crack or joint in the underlying pay, underlying pavement layer so if the if our let's say the base course and over that we have the surface course and we have the base course unbounded base course if there is a improper compaction right at the base course level or um, because of the generation of the longitudinal cracks the water has percolated at the base course making the base course weak then these uh, weakness is then reflected in the surface course we have discussed in our lecture uh, bef uh, when we were discussing about the flexible pavement we have discussed the flexible pavement uh, do not pose uh, much of the flexure strength and for that to have the flexure strength we uh, construct the flexible pavement as a multi layered structure so definitely all the structures have work in a homogeneity to provide the strength so if any of the layer is weak that will be uh, observed right at the surface course so uh, yeah, the main cause can be the underlying payment is weak then uh, 
too much uh, oxidation uh, of bitumen like this is bitumen okay uh, oxidation of bitumen the bitumen become brittle so uh, they it loses its, its elastic property in a very short span of time because of which the cracking will take place and this again can be because of the freeze thaw action and so, so that is why uh, this shrinkage phenomena is plays a very uh, like the bitumen shrinks uh, because of the um stripping and uh, like excessive change in the weather conditions so this can again be the cause of the transverse crack so transverse crack are usually formed due to shrinkage of the bitumen uh, on account of lower temperature right that is what we had just discussed that is why these transverse cracks are many times referred as the shrinkage cracks now talking about the severity level um, again 1 to 3 mm is uh, considered as a low severity medium will be from 3 to 6 and greater than 6 is what you call as excessive se severity level and uh, if uh, we are in the low to medium range then uh, treatment using slurry uh, or like sealing the crack using slurry seal or the rubberized bitumen can work right but in case of uh, in case of uh, uh, high severity again okay, no option but to remove that layer okay then we have what we call as the edge cracking okay so basically if you see uh, whatever cracks that we have seen is along the carriageway and if these cracks are only confined right at the edge as you can see in the image here if the cracks are only confined at the edge then we are call those uh, cracks as the edge cracking we say that the pavement has failed under edge cracking okay the confinement of this crack is right at the edge only and uh, basically they develop parallel to the outer edge uh, location confined to the edge and uh, uh, 0.3 to 0.5 meter inside the pavement okay so this from uh, from the edge 0.3 to this location this location is 0.3 to 0.5 meters okay 0.3 to 0.5 meters talking about the the reasons why the edge cracking can happen um, uh, if we have a lack of uh, lateral support to the uh, flexible pavement then um, the edge cracking can happen you can see like uh, uh, there is no if uh, if in this image we have no proper shoulder provision here in this image so definitely here so definitely the uh, gives a chance for the edge cracking to happen we can the another is a reason for edge cracking can be the inadequate surface drainage and because of which uh, the, uh, having inadequate surface drainage give the chance to water to uh, to be collected right at the edge level and we know that uh, the still water uh, is the worst enemy for the bitumen so along the edge only Uh, this stagnant water will cause uh, stripping at the edge level stripping of the bitumen at the edge and uh, because of which the cracking right at the edge level will take place uh, shrinking shrinkage of uh, subgrade soil uh, like if we have let's say um, like uh, black cotton soil or if the soil is not properly compacted no proper uh, there is no proper drainage uh, provision and uh, because of any reason the shrinkage in soil subgrade has been taken has been, has taken place so definitely this will be reflected in the form of edge cracking in the uh, in the flexible pavement then in uh, this will be the fourth point uh, fourth point is the inadequate pavement width near the curves fifth point is inferior quality material in the shoulders and uh, in between the uh, between surface uh, edge of the pavement wet subgrade uh, so inferior quality material and uh, inadequate pavement width is, is again a uh, reason for the generation of the edge cracking okay so now talking about the severity level you can very well see this is the high severity level right and in the image that we have seen here this will uh, be again in the uh, towards the extreme high uh, scenario in, in talking about the low severity level uh, uh, basically when there is no break up or loss of the material then we call it as a low severity if we uh, say how, when we when we can say that the edge cracking is at medium severity if some uh, break up has been done like out of uh, in, uh, along the length only 10% of the material has been uh, breaked or 
came out from the edge then we can say that it is in the medium COD level high COD level you can see here everything is broken everything more than 10% uh, of the effective length if that is broken then we can we will say that it's a high severity um, talking about how the treatment can be done um, first thing is to promote good drainage along the edge of the road we do we have to make sure that no water is stored along the edges and um, um, uh, we allow a proper uh, we should have a provision of proper drainage facility so that water can go out R uh, if there is any poor drainage along the shoulder uh, we have to replace that with the, some permeable material uh, and then the uh, truck traffic plays a substan substantial uh, role in this uh, so we have to like again based upon the uh, loading we have to improve the quality of the edge uh, if required uh, to prevent the edge cracking then the next kind of uh, uh, cracking is the reflection cracking and as the name itself says it's a reflection right reflection means reflection of what reflection of some kind of defect that may ha have happened at the uh, lower layers of the flexible payment so basically uh, these uh, this reflection crack cracking is not because of the uh, defect in the surface uh, surface cores this uh, the reflective cracking is uh, because of the defect in at the lower levels so we, if we have this base course then we have the sub base course and then we have the subgrade course we have the subgrade course uh, and this is our surface cores this is our surface cores uh, and this this is your surface course and we see the uh, the propagation of cracks now these cracks are maybe due to any weakness that that is underlying in the uh, layer below okay so because of that uh, these cracks are reflected at the top okay and um, uh, so these cracks appear in the bitumen surface over the joints and underneath Crack uh, underneath crack payment. Okay, uh, so that's what we have discussed. If the, the, uh, let's say if there is some uh, uneven compaction and uh, uh, as the traffic is moved, so if let's say the uh, base goes buckle, so this will be a recurring process, and because of which the crack at the surface will we will see. And uh, at the joints, the being the weaker section, the crack may propagate from there. Um, the location is more frequent in the bituminous overlays so basically what we uh, uh, overlay is what when we remove uh, suppose there is some defect in the in the surface course uh, we have removed the surface course and then we have re uh, 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 overlaid the surface course with a new surface course layer right we have removed this layer and then we have uh, constructed a new layer but what we, what we have discussed is that the problem is not at the surface the problem is not at the surface but in the underlying layers right so definitely this uh, because of this this again this overlaid uh, road uh, will again pose these uh, cracks okay so uh, these are most frequently the bitumen overlays on cement concrete pavement or the cement soil base. Okay, so until unless uh, uh, if the underlying pay, uh, underlying defect is not taken care of, this will uh, keep on happening. Uh, so if the, we have the uh, like uh, cement concrete pavement underneath, then overlays bitumen overlays will showcase this kind of problems. In flexible pavements, uh, they may occur in the old existing pavement have not been properly rectified or uh, may occur in the overlays. Um, in case the pavement is widened, then jo definitely joints are formed. So being the weaker section from there, the difficulty cracking uh, may arise. And uh, again, the, the location will be exactly at the junction between the old payment and the widened portion that we, that we have widened. Okay, being the weaker section, it allows the water to pen penetrate and the other uh, future damage that can happen. Another cause can be the differential movement uh, and the thermal cracks. If the underlying layer is made up of cement concrete, and the thermal uh, stress that is generated at the bottom layer that may uh, propagate uh, these stress may propagate at the top layer which is a bituminous course and uh, these reflective cracking can happen and uh, the differential movement between the uh, between two layers can also lead to generation of reflective cracking how can these uh, 
and the fatigue cracking be treated it depends upon the pay, if the payment is structurally sound or is totally distorted this means that suppose there are some hill the frequency of generation of hill like crack is more prominent then um, basically the structure the payment is sound it is it is still has the load taking um, uh, characteristics so uh, that is one scenario but if the generation of cracks are very severe then the the payment is basically unsound in case the payment is uh, structurally sound then we have to we can do one thing that we can fill these cracks uh, with certain uh, uh, rubberized binder or using fox seals or we can seal the cracks uh, using cut deck emulsions uh, again there is a spelling mistake uh, cut back bitumen this will be cut back bitumen uh, using emulsions rubberized bitumen and likewise and uh, if the uh, severity is very high if uh, like we have uh, the layer as totally dismembered distorted then we have no option but to remove and uh, and then recheck the what what the underlying underlying problem is whatever be the underlying problem we have to um, we have to rectify that if required a semi layer has to be uh, casted and then over that we have to put an unbound base course and then uh, again the laying of the road overlaying of the road has be, need to be done okay so this was all about the uh, the crack defect in the in the flexible payment okay so i hope uh, the lecture was uh, useful to you uh, uh, if so uh, like the video uh, like the video share the video and um, if you feel uh, you can go through if you haven't gone through yet then you can go through the previous lectures and uh, other uh, playlist and see uh, if uh, the channel and the videos are useful to you, uh, kindly subscribe to the channel and uh, give your views in the comment section. And if how can we improve um, the quality of the videos? And if there is any topic of which you want me to prepare lecture, I will prepare that. You can write in the comment section. Okay. So thank you for watching the video. Uh, do share your views. Uh, thank you. Have a nice day.